All right, all right. Good morning, traders. Welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar. Today is Thursday, March 17th, and we've got some doozies. Lots of things going on in the market, lots of big moves to talk about. Good morning to everyone in the room. Good to see you. Um, quick piece of housekeeping before we get started. I will be out next week. Uh, I will be undergoing some surgery on Monday. I really don't know, guys. If I have, uh, if the recovery is faster than expected, I might drop a webinar on Thursday, depending on what the market's doing and what my body's doing. But um, all things held constant, I'm scheduled for next Tuesday. So this will be the last webinar for a week until I get through that recovery. So quick note there. That said, let's jump right in. The menu is long today because there is a lot moving. We'll start off with DXY, Euro dollar, Sterling dollar. We just got the BOE raising interest rates, another 25 basis points, gold, SPX, uh, New Zealand dollar, dollar CAD, Aussie dollar. I'll take a quick look at the 10 year, which is at near term resistance and dollar yen. And uh, Ty, I see you in the room. I'll hit NDX and DJI as well. Prediction, the NASDAQ will crash next week, 1500 points, that's a big, Prediction tie. Um, I do think some of the moves that we saw yesterday were actually near term constructive, specifically in the SPX. So while I do think that the broader risk for the markets are still lower near term, you might have some room for a rebound tie. So your call for next week might be the right timing. I take it as we go. From here, we've just come off support. So we'll take a look at all those levels. All right. Let's go jump right in. Going 300 points higher than lower ties. says <laughs> might be the play, might be the play. Here's what DXY looked like, guys, on the back of yesterday's interest rate decision. I dropped all the info here. Just wanted to share it with you. A quick review of what we got from the FOMC yesterday. Obviously, the first thing that comes to mind is the spread and the magnitude of the distribution for 2022. You're seeing a lot of um, indecision with Fed members all over the place, some calling for a much slower rate of interest rate rises, some calling for interest rates to be above 3% by the end of the year. So the distribution's huge. The thing that stuck out more to me was the fact that we talked about this. In 2024, it looked like you had a couple of members that were seeing rates above the natural rate or the longer term, the terminal rate of 2.5 some fed members see the need to go above that to curb this inflation fast forward to march we're way up there some fed, member, some fed members see this year most of them for the next two years are going to see the need to hold rates above the quote unquote natural un, uh, natural um, uh, interest rates the other thing is that the even the call for what the natural rate is that distribution is also starting to shift a little and you're seeing fed members starting to drop that uh lower so it's an interesting dynamic fast forward to the projections and what you saw is an increase in expectation for higher inflation and a decrease for expectations of slower growth okay this is like a recipe for stagflation <laughs> not to scare anyone but um please allow photos of large screens uh yeah ty i will let me know anything you need to see brother but that's a very interesting dynamic that we're seeing so all in all the markets took that as okay we're gonna get on an aggressive hiking cycle not necessarily 50 basis points but the 25 basis points for the next six interest rate decisions are essentially being priced in let's just take a quick look what the cme tool looks like now Oh, I thought I had the link on here. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, in any event, there it is. I think that's it. All right. So we're priced in right now uh, for December. Yeah, still the majority of Fed members um, basically are looking for two to two, two and a quarter, even a little bit higher. Um, than what we saw pre-Fed, right? I think the majority was somewhere in one, one uh, and three quarters to two. Um, that's even increased, okay? So with all this backdrop, you're seeing that 
the Fed's expecting higher inflation and prolonged inflation, transitory <laughs> ridiculousness of that transitory comment that we talked about for so long is gone. And you're seeing slower growth, but it's a very, very delicate balance because the inflationary concern is really the, the Fed's, remember the Fed has a dual mandate, price stability, i.e. inflation, and maximum employment. Maximum employment, they've continued to hammer home. We're basically almost there. There's real strength in the labor market. So their focus needs to be on inflation, which again is running well above the 2% target, right? So all of that in the background and you have equity markets, which are threatening a bigger spill and a huge war that's looming. So certainly the markets took it in stride, guys. And here's what uh, the DXY, before I jump into last night's update, looked like um, right before the release. We were talking about the fact that we were looking for possible exhaustion, okay? The, the whole game plan was to look for possible topside exhaustion, near-term support at that 618, key support 9770s, 9780s. We're not down here, but we have pulled back a bit. Here's what the weekly chart looks like. Again, I just want to remind you where we turned from right into the weekly open. We talked about that sliding parallel. This is all the same slope from the 2021 ascent. All of it, okay? And we just turned, again, let's just turn this red probably to make it a little bit clearer for everyone. Um, we just turned, again, from uptrend resistance and the current operable uptrend resistance at the 75% parallel. So here's the pullback. DXY in the daily looks like this. At some point, the analysis will load. Sorry about that, guys. Any moment. Here we go. All right, DXY. So on the daily chart, okay, we're still in that, you know, really tight range. I wouldn't say it's really tight, but it's a range right below uptrend resistance, right? There's that slope. We've just been ranging lower highs, higher lows. Look for a crack out here. If it breaches higher, nothing changes. The two levels that we were talking about is resistance into 99.66. It's still going to be sort of your key levels of, of initial resistance and the 100 mark. We're looking for the top side exhaustive mark. It's an uptrend. The uptrend looks a little tired. And we're looking for a near-term breakout in price. Here's what it looks like on the intraday chart. Nothing really to write home about. This is the two-hour. I think the last one I showed you was a four-hour. So let's get some just for the sake of continuity here. So you can see we didn't get a new high per se, that high held, and then there's the 618, there is the median line. So look, today, maybe you get a little bit of an upslope. I'd wanna see resistance well ahead of the weekly open if we are gonna see that drawdown near 9780, 9770. Uh, you know, the weekly opening range for all intents and purposes did break. It wasn't the cleanest one, it broke on a Wednesday. So either way, you're looking for a Thursday, Friday low. Um, in the DXY, but if this continues to coil and a lower high, and this ends up being a higher low, low, look for that consolidation breakout. Look for that consolidation breakout. It's interesting because you got some decent moves across the other pairs where DXY in and of itself, again, 60% weighted euro, was a little bit reserved yesterday. So lots of volatility. Here's the interest rate hike. I mean, here's what it looks like on the intraday chart, right? Initial moves. Very often times a decent fade position. Uh, I took a long on the euro. I'll show you that in a moment. I told you that in last night's update. I just chipped out the rest of it and I closed it out at 1055 today. Um, I think it, you, you might get a new term pullback. At, at any event, let's look at uh, let's take a look at euro dollar. Any questions on DXY? Okay. Here is what euro looked like last night, and I want to show you the full suite of things before we jump in. Here's the weekly chart. Um, Man, I'm not sure why this is not updating. I apologize about that, guys. Been having some internet issues lately, but I'm hearing it's like a Jersey wide thing. All right, so here is Euro on the daily chart, right? We talked about it in the webinar on Tuesday, that uh, amazing phenomenon that we saw the 88.6 catch the highs. Now we're seeing the 88.6 catch the lows. Nice downtrend support had us looking for that sort of a reaction here, right? Um, here's what it looked like on the, well, before I get to the daily chart, near-term resistance on the weekly is going to be 111. 
Okay, 111.09, 111.07. Got to break out of that slope again. You got to break out of this congestion zone to validate a reversal. Okay, that would suggest that a more significant low is in place. If we fail here, all things steady as she goes. But for me, it was worth the long. I think I should have held on a little bit of it, but uh, here's what it looks like on the daily chart. Again, here's what it looked like yesterday on that same chart, right? We dropped right into that 86, 108.31, 108.14 was also the 786 of the advance. Nice low there. Popped into former support resistance, pulled lower. Here's where we were yesterday. So right ahead of the release, man, it was trading at the median line. Once the release happened and we jackknife lower and then that held, it was a perfect fade opportunity. Here's what it'll look like on the intraday charts. Uh, I'm not sure why that's not expanding. Huh. All kinds of glitches today. Sorry about this, guys. Okay, so I'm not sure why the Euro chart's not expanding from last night. Um, but in any event, here's what it looked like in real time. All right, so the drop yesterday was a perfect test of what? Uptrend support. And then once that candle, and this is this is the two hour, once that candle right closed, the next candle opened, we dropped down again and it started to turn. That was a really nice entry. Stop against the low, first level of interest, 110.37. That's a basic 618 of the drop. Second level of interest is up here. I told you 108.50s, I think, in last night's update, if I'm not mistaken. All right, I didn't note it in there, but that's essentially the initial resistance zone um, that we're looking at beyond 110.37. So as I was opening up the session today before the webinar, you're seeing some divergence, you're seeing it look a little tired. Again, regretfully, I would have left a little on here um, with at least a stop against the Asia low. But in any event, next level up now, drop that down a little bit, 108, uh, 110.80 instead of uh, 110.80s. Uh, which is ah that's I did that's a, that is what I put yesterday. I'm sorry, I'm a little dyslexic this morning. Uh, 1180s, drop that down a little bit, right to that median line. The big breakout is still 111. Former swing lows, former swing highs. This line goes all the way back. If you look at the daily chart, 111, just a really nice pivot in price, right? So maybe a little higher in euro. Can I have the two hour again? Yeah, you sure can. Here's a two hour, okay? No change from last night's update. No change, tie. same exact levels. Think you're getting a little bit of a wane here. If we pull back, yesterday I told you you shouldn't take out last uh, the daily low. I don't even think you get that low at this point. You wanna choke that up to the median line, all right? So if you pull back, nothing past basically 110, like 109.80s max uh, to stay constructive. Otherwise, we're still looking for that climb towards 111. Questions on Euro? Core inflation rate, final read on February, came out earlier today at 2.7% as expected, so no change there. Not much event risk from the way of the dollar, basically, into all throughout next week. I mean, as you head into next week, you do get some ancillary prints with durable goods orders and market PMI numbers. But... Really, the markets are going to be working off sentiment and off these war headlines that are coming out. The Fed is sort of starting to get real baked in here. All right, that's Euro. Uh, number two. Number three, I'm going to pick up the pace here a little bit. Here's British Pound. Obviously, BOE raised interest rates earlier today. You saw the sterling turn on that release lower. And basically, we're kind of now going to be looking for test of uptrend support. Here's what it looked like yesterday. As I told you, I've been looking at this for a while. I didn't get to get into this long. It actually stretched a little bit higher. Um, so it would have been a decent trade. Here's the, the Fed low. So really nice upstretch. This is concerning, obviously event risk driven, but we're looking for exhaustion. And if you take a retracement just of this week's range, the 618 comes in. Again, I'm sorry the charts didn't save from this morning. Uh, it comes in just ahead of that lower parallel. 
basically in your like 130, 80, 130, 79, just lower is that slope, which is again, this whole pitchfork is derived off of this upslope, right? There's the, uh, there's the original slope, right? Take a pitchfork, match it there. That's key. It's absolutely critical. Uh, take a step back from where British pound is trading and why the up or the or the re, the rebound looked interesting to begin with. I showed you guys this on Monday. I think someone about the someone in the room asked about it. Uh, the one six one eight extension at one thirty was the low, literally the low. This is a one six one eight extension from the decline off of just this year's highs, and we were looking for a reaction there, and we got it. Does that offer a bigger base, right? It's hard to tell from this point on today's reaction. Here's what it looks like on a daily chart. I don't wanna see this down uh, move get too much traction if Sterling is heading higher. The game plan, the whole idea, guys, is if that Sterling breaks down here, there's a long way to go. I mean, you get sloped near 129, but from the next lateral level of significance, there's nothing to like 2830s. So it's very problematic for pound if we break those lows. On this pullback, if we are heading higher, look for something to settle into that region near 130.79, 130.70. Uh, anything beyond that and this thing's done. Questions on the British pound? All right, looking for that to settle on this BOE pullback. Here we go, gold. So is gold finally starting to settle? I noted something in the piece last night. Is this a low in gold? Did we just bottom? Here's what we're looking for. The rally, the recovery, the daily close above 1959 is I think what's gonna be the settling thing for me here. Remember, I'll take a quick look back on where we are in the gold trade overall. Here's the weekly chart. We came off of massive resistance last week, pulled back, and what did we say into the start of this week? It would almost be too clean, like freakishly clean, but we would wanna see former resistance hold support. Uptrend resistance, breakout, hold support, and everything is going to be based on what this week's close looks like. We close northbound of 1903, 1923. I think you have some hope for the resumptive trade of the uptrend. If we duck back below that and exhaustion highs in place, period, end of conversation, exclamation point. <laughs> Here's what it looks like on the daily chart, guys. So big rejection, massive resistance, huge pullback. We said the first spot that we would wanna hold if we're, we're heading higher on the immediate uptrend is 1950, 1959, the same level we're looking for resistance now. That broke, you tumbled down, two levels we were looking for were the monthly open and the 618 of the yearly range. We turned just a dollar or so. I think the low registered at uh, 1890, uh, 1895. Okay, a couple dollars up. Just ahead of it, we turned higher. The test will be if we're able to mount 1916 close above that. That's gonna be the resumptive move. Otherwise, we're looking for a reaction here first. If this is just gonna be a larger correction, that might be the resistance zone that takes you down to a new low, but that's the importance of this pivot, guys. We can't get really constructive on gold again for the longer term run till we close 1560 on the upside. All right, intraday chart, no change there. Really, again, this slope, same thing. I pit, I, I uh, tweeted a chart yesterday of a pitchfork. You know, I like just to keep you guys updated right ahead of the releases for some near-term charts, some things to consider. And some guy came at me and said, hey, that pitchfork is based on nothing. And that's because he didn't see that the three reference points were marked at any major near-term highs or lows. I'm the first one to tell you guys, don't get super creative and super liberal with your pitchforks because you'll end up chasing unicorns. But when you see a drop like this, guys, when you see a drop like you did in oil, okay, you're not gonna get a high, low high to give yourself a gradient. So what are you just gonna start chasing nothing? No, that's when it pays to give yourself that little added edge find a series of higher, of lower highs, find a series of higher lows, find a gradient of resistance, 
and tweak, match the pitchfork for that, okay? Again, I don't wanna get too liberal and creative and you know anything I want goes as long as it looks good, no. There is merit to this slope. We have three reference points touched. So yeah, I think there's merit to this pitchfork. Near-term resistance, the median line converges right on that key zone we've been looking at anyway, 1959, 1915 to 1959. Bearish invalidation for the immediate trend would be a breach back above the weekly opening range highs, the weekly open, and that's 1988. Questions? All right, that is gold. Four, number five, Ty, I know you're looking at this one. Here's the SPX. So the S&P 500 looks like, okay, it may have broken uh, the near-term downtrend. And that's why I was telling you maybe, yeah, I think you might be on with a little bit better of a stretch there for a, a bounce higher, <coughs> excuse me, and then maybe a move lower. Let me take you back and just show you how insane this SPX move has been. Radical, absolutely radical, okay? If we close the week at these levels, the market will have uh, produced an outside daily, an outside weekly reversal, okay? All the red arrows you see in this chart represent outside weekly reversals. Here's an outside re weekly reversal lower, 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 and outside weekly reverse reversal higher, and that's the last one we've gotten. Okay, here we are now getting an outside weekly reversal off of uptrend support. I can't stress this enough. Do I think that everything's solved in Ukraine? No. Do I think it's going to be God, you know, forbid, but a protracted longer conflict, perhaps, is everything out of the woods? Are we okay? No, but near term, could we get a larger recovery? Could we get a test of the 52-week moving average at 44? Could we even stretch a little higher? Sure, sure. Remember, we broke uptrend support, tested it as resistance, and moved lower. Here's a test of uptrend support on the longer term. Could see a bit of a rally. Watch the weekly close tomorrow. If this does hold and that red arrow can stay there as a weekly reversal, it would suggest near term you're in for a little bit of a bump higher. All right. So what does that look like on the daily chart? Is there any indication that maybe this may be something that's on tact? Well, here's the daily chart. Basic high, low, high off of last year's, what was that, the December? Open high, low, high into January. The lower parallel caught the lows. Really nice inflection along the median line. Got a little messy here. On the upside, when we broke, there's a sliding parallel of the same gradient. So we took that off the high to see if it would offer any resistance. It looks like we just broke through. Now, the thing that bothers me here, well, let me take a step back. There's also a couple of other things to take a hallmark on here um, for the advance. Not only are we on pace to mark an outside weekly reversal, but we also marked an outside daily reversal right off the lows here. Right? Took out the previous day's lows, closed above the previous day's highs. So that in and of itself, ahead of FOMC, was near-term bullish. Here's FOMC, yesterday's breakout, pushing through the 618, failing where? Right at the monthly open, 43.72. That scares me a little for the breakout trade, right? Oops, sorry about that, guys. Um, for the breakout trade, right? If we're gonna really break out, a pivot through the monthly open should see this thing accelerate, then you're looking for 44.16 and, and beyond. But monthly open, yeah. So that for me, the immediate focus is on 43.13, 43.72. I want to see a break of this immediate zone. If we break lower, it could be an exhaustion. It could be just a, a false break of downtrend resistance. But if 43.13 holds, that's 618 of the drop, and the monthly open breaches, then you're on your way. So that's sort of the immediate focus for me here. 
heading into the U.S. Open. Let me uh, just drop for you. The only thing that's not on that chart is the um, is the monthly open. So let me get that for you. Darn it. Okay. Oops. Okay, there is the monthly open. 43.72, I'm not sure why it's coming out there. Okay, so here's the near-term chart. And here's what I showed you guys last night. Okay. So the uptrend had broken, or the downtrend had broken resistance. Here's the uptrend. Here's the median line. Here's the confluence zone. This is what I was, I was hoping to get a larger reaction from. We ran into the March open. Here's the pullback. Again, 43.13 ideally holds. Max, max 42.90, basically that slope confluence on the upside. I want to see a larger reaction here. If we pop 44.16, Again, for me, that's conviction of the breakout of the downtrend. Again, that's conviction of near-term acceleration for the uptrend. And that's also a major pivot in price. Okay, it's a 618 of the drop. Um, and would suggest that a more significant low is in place at least near term. Okay. One more thing to consider. If this does break 43, uh, 4416 rather, um, and we are on sort of like a corrective recovery before the larger turn lower two equal legs exposes 4450 so i was looking at this earlier you're getting too many lines here now you're gonna start chasing stuff so i just want to show you even if we break this high keep your eye on that it might be something to consider i'm not sure um, i will expect if this breaks to be an accelerated rally but at the end of the day into the open of u.s trade today you want to see this pullback find a low ahead of one of these two levels. All right, that's the immediate focus. Any questions on the SPX? Okay, I, I'll, I'll hit NASDAQ and, and Dow uh, later in the session here, Ty, uh, but I just wanna kind of go in order. So that is SPX and our last update um, from last night. Before that, we wanted to go over some of these commodity currencies and some of them saw some pretty big moves on FOMC. Here's what New Zealand dollar looked like. Opening the week, coming off of confluent support, the 2020 yearly open, a 50% retracement, downtrend support, and the recovery was already starting before the FOMC came on tap. Here's what New Zealand dollar looks like now. All right. Not only did we rally into that resistance zone that we were looking at, which was at the 50% retracement near 68.27, we've even taken out the 618. So again, a break of downtrend resistance? Maybe, maybe. If that's true, pullbacks should be capped by the weekly open. Next level up on the breakout would be 68.90. It's a huge level. That's the, that's the January highs for the year. So I'm actually on the lookout for topside exhaustion here in New Zealand dollar, um, short covering bond fires. Uh, could be, could be. Again, we talked about, uh, Ty, the dollar is at resistance. You know, there's been so much, the, the, the Fed's gonna hike rates by the dollar. Oh, the markets are in free fall by the dollar. Oh, there's a war in Europe by the dollar. The sentiment exhausts, guys. The sentiment exhausts. So I think, you know, on the long side, dollar just taking a little bit of a breather here, dollar weakness, here you're seeing it reflected in Kiwi strength. I'm not looking too much into it as this is the short covering per se, because this has been in a multi-week uptrend. Oh, you're talking about stock indices. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Ty, I, I saw your question late there. Yes. Um, and that's just my humble opinion, Ty. I do think that um, the bounce that you saw here, a lot of it is short covering, but a lot of it's also bottom fishing, right? The Fed's a backstop. Oh, we feel better. The Fed's not going to let this thing fall apart. We're, you know, we're monitoring this and we'll adjust. All these things, they're, they're all fluff, but at the end of the day, 
they they do tend to tamp down some of those concerns. So it could be about a short covering. Um, I still think the, have, the market's heavily weighted long, so I don't think it's a washout per se. So look, Ty, from my part as a trader, I don't try to put and dignify this is what I think is happening in the broader trade. Either the shorts are clearing out or the longs are clearing out. Certainly we'll look at volume, we'll look at um, exposure, uh, you see me on daily effects all the time write about market sentiment which is the ig positioning basically they take a positioning of all their clients and show you how many are long versus short um possible here but that doesn't mean that the recovery can't still get still get some more bump higher you know what i mean so any questions on new zealand dollar if this breakout's legit near-term pullbacks should hold ahead of 68 top side you're looking for 68.90 all right, a similar scenario in dollar cat, I wish. This thing is just, look, I'm not even gonna show you the near term, I'll show it to you, but uh, you know, the, the, the weekly chart on this is, is essentially all you need to see, man, okay? Big, big resistance. We've been in this same range for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks now. We tested a major break three weeks ago, that closed way higher off the lows. Today, this week, we tested a major breakout again. Here we are lower on this session. So this is rock solid resistance. And again, don't take my word for it. Here's what it looks like on a weekly close basis. Rock solid. Momentum as we head into that zone. Look at that. Look at that. Couldn't even make it strike into 60. So there's just no, there's just no Momo here on the long side, in my opinion, to get this through. And we're seeing that reflected with the pullback. Obviously, again, we've been talking about the theme of dollar weakness, a little bit of a, of a, of a breather. Uh, you're seeing it exacerbated here. Here's the monthly open. Here's your low day close for the month. We're pressing through it. Here's your yearly open in the 618. Guys, this is still the same range we talked about all through February, ever since the breakout. This is support, bullish inval. This is support, bullish inval. Once again, this is support, bullish inval. If we close sub 126.13, you're likely going to see this thing fall apart. Until we do, you're going to see those calls of a larger consolidation still underway, in which case we're in a range. Buy near support, sell near resistance. So I don't have any plays on dollar CAD. I've been frustrated on this trade. It was actually a decent short right into the beginning of the week. If you're trading this as an objective range, which it certainly has been, you know, every time you go near the range highs, the short would have worked. Here's FOMC, right? Even on the spike higher. There wasn't, I was looking at this yesterday, I was considering a short, but on this spike higher, where am I gonna put my stop? It needs to be up against that. And I wasn't willing to take a 75, uh, you know, uh, 60 pip, 100 pips, or whatever that is. Wasn't willing to take a stop that big. When it faded, there was an opportunity to get in, but even as it started to fade, it was so quick that you're already looking for a stop like 70 pips off the low here. So there was just no chance for me to get in. If you would have timed it better, you may have gotten a chance on this yesterday. On this decline, again, the yearly open, 2640, 618, 2613, um, you know, that's the range lows for the last eight weeks. <laughs> so we're in the range until it breaks. I must say, objectively, if I do look at this, propensity does look like it wants to see a downside break. While the top side breaches have been deeper, um, the rejections have just been pretty, you know, un, un, undeterred. So range 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 that's what i got to say in dollar cat hope to see this thing clear at some point but till it does we're here all right so that's looney um last thing i wanted to update from uh, so no change to any of the looney levels we're trading right here that's still unchanged last thing i wanted to update from the com block was aussie and here's what aussie looked like another beautiful trade i'd have missed it but um the, the trade was there. He had 100% extension on the way down. He had a 618 retracement off the low, my favorite FIB confluence zones. And we were looking for essentially a reaction off that level and we got it, okay? Let me take you back to Aussie and why we're even looking for the recovery to begin with. Here's Aussie dollar. Here's the weekly chart. I showed you this last week, nothing's changed. You see that slope? Basic trend line support off the, off the um, off the yearly lows, a 618 of the yearly range. We were looking for a low 
ahead of 7140. That was the focus on the pullback from 52 week moving average, downtrend resistance on the pullback. That was the reaction. We're looking for a reaction here. If we're heading higher, that would need to hold. Daily chart looked like this, not as clean. Okay, not as clean. I didn't have the 100% extension on here, but looking for a low off one of these two levels, a break above 7270 would put us back on track. Here's the trade. Okay, so played out perfectly, played out perfectly. That drop right into that 100% extension, 618, that was the key zone, right, that we were looking for the inflection for. That held, popped back above 7270s. Here's a breach above the January high. We're right here. So from this level, guys, if the breakout is legit, if you're, you know, you're looking for a basic, like something like this, right? If the breakout is legit, then the pullback, initial support, bullish inval on the long side, 7380 and 7413 is going to be the 2020 September high way back here. I'm kidding. Go back far in this chart, but you get the point. So sexy trade, loved it, loved it. Again, I didn't, you know, just too much going on yesterday. I didn't get a chance. I didn't want to double up on dollar exposure either, but uh, it stretched even higher. Another one that would have been even a really good move. Again, just as a sort of a tidbit, here's your weekly open. So you've even broken the weekly opening range highs. All right, could see some pullback here. Looking for support ahead of 72.70 if this is going to go higher in Aussie. Questions? All right, uh, a quick note, 10-year uh, yield is our resistance. We cited a level at 20, uh, at 214, 215, which is what, 618 extension. Uh, just higher uh, is 127. We turned just ahead of that. A little bit of an exhaustion trade here, right? A little bit of an exhaustion trade on rates. Um, I showed you guys uh, an interesting piece on this. Um, Right, this is, uh, I guess you gotta look at this on the monthly chart. So just to give you guys an indication, this is the two, uh, the 10 two year um, spread. Okay, so it's the spread between the 10 year minus the two year, very simple, nothing, nothing fancy. Um, what I wanted to show you is that every time that yield, I think I showed you this on Tuesday, but everything, every time that yield inversion or every time that yield curve inverts means goes negative, it's been a pretty tumultuous time in markets. You can see that the most previous times or the most recognizable times was obviously the, the tech bust in, in 2000. Here's the financial crisis. Here's COVID, the start of COVID, right? Here's now. So these are recessionary signals, right? So it sort of gives you an added tell if you see that rally in stocks, it might be like you're saying, a bear market rally or you know, a little bit of a short covering, but we're not out of the woods yet. So when you see yields doing what it's you, when it's doing, when you see the 10 year doing what it's doing, when you see the curve doing what it's doing, um, it it's a it's a moment of pause. Okay, it's a moment of pause. And what's the reflective trade of this sentiment in FX? Well, that's dollar yen, right? Um, I'm not going to lie to you. I had a short on this yesterday, um, closed half of it in the money, like up 30 pips. And then I got stopped out at break even on the rest. Um, I think you're, you're at risk of exhaustion here. Like no other, I don't like that. I don't have, um, can I have a photo of the 10 year? Yeah, sure. Uh, here's the 10 year. Got a tie. So if we take a look at dollar yen, it, it 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 has the hallmarks of exhaustion. I wish it was there was a stronger lateral level of significance there, uh, but I just don't have it. I just don't have it from these levels. And if you look at this from like the extenuating circumstances, when's the last time that we saw a nine week rally? Well, guys, it's been some time. I looked at this; it's been years since we've seen a nine week consecutive rally. I think you got to go back to like 2016, right here. Not even that was eight weeks. You got to go back years. That was eight weeks too. I think literally we haven't done this since like 
2011. 2011. And you see what happened there on that on that spike on that nine week rally. This was a 10 week rally. That was the high for the year. That was the high for the year. Now I'm not saying this is a high for the year for dollar yen per se, but this is a different trend, right? Because this is within the confines of the downtrend. It was the high. All I'm saying is within the confines of the uptrend, this might be near-term uptrend resistance. It might be an exhaustive move. So it's it's there. Again, I'm never going to advocate for you guys to try catching a falling knife or try uh, calling a high per se on a trade. But when it's an exhausted of this much, when you get near-term price action doing what it's doing, I think it was worth a shot. I wouldn't try it again. Again, I, I came out of that one in the money, but I, I wouldn't try that again per se just yet. Um, hold off on this one. With rates doing what it's doing, with the markets doing what it's doing, I would again advocate i would favor a move down towards 1790s 18 before the resumption higher but you know that's just my opinion here's the here's the weekly chart like 121 is the next lateral level of significance that i have that's the 2016 high we close uh if we close this week sub 1866 you know that would be a near term exhaustion in my opinion in that case maybe on friday uh, maybe into the open of next week, there might be an opportunity for the pullback. Ultimately, guys, the easier trade is to wait for the pullback to buy. But I'm just not interested in getting long up here. And there's not enough technical significance for me just near term to try this short yet. So something to keep an eye on over the next couple of days. All right, that's dollar yen. Last but not least, your two equity indices uh, that we didn't cover. And they were covered here earlier in the week. Here's what it looks like on the uh, uh, NDX first. Here's what it looks like back on the 13th, guys. Uh, we were highlighting that key support, highlighting key resistance near 1441. Uh, so basically 14,000 proper. Here's DJI uh, or NDX now. Okay, we're there. Let me show the weekly charts first. Here's the NDX on the weekly. All right. Again, another material risk for an outside weekly reversal off the lows. Again, the red arrows are the arrows that you see where we've made outside weekly reversals in NDX, in NDX, on the top side, on the top side, on the top side. Something to pay attention to. And again, would suggest if we close the week at these levels, you have some more upside to go. Now, if we take a basic 38.2 of the decline, basically the, this last year's decline, the 38.2 doesn't come until a way up here, okay, at 14,478. So near term, initial resistance is gonna be right at that April high close. There was a decent pivot on the way up and a decent pivot on the way down. That's 14 proper, a little bit higher, 14.41, okay? The breakout, the level of which would invalidate rather the larger downtrend we've seen since the beginning of the year is up here at 14,478. Okay, so some more room possibly for a larger recovery, especially if we close the week with an outside weekly reversal. Okay, go back to the daily chart. Here's what it looks like. That key support zone, key, key, key support. Yeah, that held. That held again. We dropped, dropped in it. We went right into the lower parallel right here. That held. Here's the rebound, the quick response. The 618, 13,948 is being tested right now. Again, I'm not sure why the chart shifted here. It's the four hour. Oh, here's the four hour. All right. And here's what the four hour looked like earlier in the week. So we just dropped right into that key support zone and it rejected again. We're now testing resistance. Now it's not on slope, it's ahead of schedule. So if this does break, again, be mindful of the slope, a little bit higher. But all things held constant today, right now, you're opening it up the market at a pretty major pivot zone of resistance. Keep an eye on this today. Keep an eye on this today. If this kicks back from here, right, and starts to move lower, you're not just looking for the resumptive of the downtrend just yet, right? 
you, you have to, I really can't stress this enough. And don't take my word for anything, guys. Go back in price action and look at what the last material outside reversal candles have done. Have they been a tell or have they not been a tell? This means nothing till the weekly close. So that's why I'm a little bit more reserved on NDX, where SPX, I think he's still got a little bit more upside. NDX is sort of coming into a major pivot zone of resistance right now. All right, Ty? Uh, last but not least, uh, DJI. Here's what the Dow Jones Industrial Average looks like. Not as um, you know exciting, I would say, but it looks like we could be seeing the topside breach of a near-term consolidation. Again, I have us at resistance right now. This is a 38-2 retracement of the decline off the yearly highs. So it basically encompasses the 2022 trading range. Decent pivot in price, lows from December. Near-term close lows from October at 38.2. It's all right here at resistance. So watch for reaction here today. If this breaks out higher, look, the 50 comes near like 35, 58, but it's really the upper parallel. That's what you'd be looking for um, if this breaches. One last thing on this also, if you want to get a little bit more just objective, right? Forget the slope. Let me just work with basic trend line. This is only a two-point touch. You can consider it three if you work with both of those days. But, you know, that would put the breakout a little bit ahead of that parallel. So keep an eye on both of these. If this does breach higher, the focus is on a pivot above 34,060. Woo, that was a mouthful. And that's everything I have on my list, guys. Do let me know if you have any other questions, your trade setups you want to review. Uh, before we wrap this up, uh, can I have the big picture for Dow? Yeah, yeah, here's the Dow on the daily. Okay. Here is the Dow on the monthly, or the weekly rather. You don't have an outside weekly reversal here in Dow as you do in the NASDAQ and the SPX. So it's not quite the same trade. Also, the Dow never really compromised major um, longer term upslopes. You know, the Dow upslope broke real early um, and it never really had a parallel beyond that. In fact, let me check this out real quick. Bear with me. Wow, shut up. <laughs> wow, I didn't even notice that. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, operable slope, original slope, parallel, a little bit of a rider there. Sliding parallel for the low. I mean, you can't even make that up, guys. Adds further conviction to critical support in that zone that we dropped in back in February. That's 32,021 to 32,530. Huge, huge level. All right. Does that get you in, Ty? Aurelian, anyone else in the room? Any questions or trade setups you want to review? Uh, otherwise, we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Look, we've had a big week. We got the Fed. That's cleared out. Interest rate expectations and trade uh, assumptions based on interest rate expectations are, I think, is a that's played right. Don't 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 run after that. The focus is here, sort of the reset. The breather, the market ran into support on the, on the Dow Jones, the market ran into support on the NDX, the market ran into support on the SPX. The focus is this recovery. Does that recovery blow off the next leg lower or do we actually mark resumption? The focus of that, the tell, I think will be into the, into the weekly closes. So do keep your eyes on that. I'll try to keep you guys updated uh, on SB Squawk and MB Forex of everything that's going on. Uh, into next week. I hope to have a couple of updates for you. Definitely not on Monday or Tuesday, uh, but as the fog clears from surgery, <laughs> hopefully I'll be back sooner rather than later. Best of luck trading, guys. Have an awesome weekend. Thank you, Ty. God bless you, sir, as well. I covet your prayers on this, um, and uh, God will provide. I will be back next week. Best of luck trading, guys, and have an awesome weekend. Cheers.